Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another episode of Airstream Expeditions. In November of 2022, we had a chance to travel to Baja, California. We stopped by the towns of Gonzaga Bay, Bahia de Los Angeles, Punta Abrejos, and Bahia Concepcion. The next few episodes will cover that entire trip, so I hope you enjoy. Baja, California, a 27,587 square mile adventure land, sandwiched by the Pacific Ocean and the Sea of Cortez. For many people, Baja can be an intimidating place and would be the last place they would ever visit. But to others, it's a terrific opportunity to decompress, explore, and escape. Many people make the annual pilgrimage to these desert lands, some eager for adventure, some for retirement, some looking for solitude, and some just to escape the cold weather. This year, we're jumping on board and creating new memories. We really don't know what to expect, as this is our first time driving this far south into Baja, California with our Airstream travel trailer. This is our story, the adventures we will share together, the people we will meet along the way, and the obstacles we'll have to overcome. This is Baja, California. Our first destination would be a six hour drive south of the US Mexicali border to Bahia de Los Angeles. About halfway between the town of San Felipe and Bahia de Los Angeles, you begin to see a change in the landscape, and a peculiar plant begins to speckle the desert. It's hard to miss this odd, tall tapered tree with spiny branches that looks more like a drawing out of a Dr. Seuss book than something you would expect to find in this desert. The Bujum tree, or Ciro in Spanish, is one of Baja's most unique plants. It's almost endemic to Baja, California, with just a few of them found in Sonora, Mexico as well. They are drought-tolerant plants and can get by with only five inches of rain per year and belong to the same family as Ocotillos, which are common in Southern California. This area of Baja, California is also home to the massive Cardon cactus. These giants can grow up to 60 feet tall and weigh up to 25 tons. There are 120 species of cactus in Baja, but the Cardon is the largest cactus, not only on the peninsula, but in the entire world. Many of these prickly giants are over 100 years old, and scientists believe that some Cardon live up to 200 years old. The Cardon cactus of this region are so unique that one cactus was transported all the way to Spain for the World's Fair in 1992. We finally arrived at our destination, Bahia de Los Angeles, a small silver mining town at the turn of the century that has now become a popular destination for sport fishing and ecotourism. This tiny town is so off the beaten path that it doesn't even have cell phone service, and the town recently got electricity back in 2007. There are also no banks or ATMs. But what it lacks in infrastructure, it makes up tenfold in natural beauty. The Bahia de Los Angeles Biosphere Reserve was established by the Mexican government in 2007 to protect the natural beauty and extraordinary ecosystem of the region. The reserve includes part of the coast where five species of sea turtles lay their eggs, the Canal de las Ballenas or Channel of the Whales where whale sharks and fin whales live, and 16 islands that are home to sea lions. Along the shore lies a semi-off-grid town. It's home to some restaurants, a handful of hotels, small grocery stores, a museum, and some boat tour operators. Aside from sport fishing, Swimming with whale sharks is one of the most popular things to do in Bahia de Los Angeles. During the whale shark season, which begins in July and ends in November, you can hire a boat tour operator and snorkel with the world's largest fish. If you're here on the off season for whale sharks, you can hire a boat to see the fin whales instead, and fin whales are the second largest whales in the sea. Home base for the next few days would be Campo Archelón. The camp is named after a giant prehistoric sea turtle that existed in North America about 70 to 80 million years ago. 
The campsite is a former sea turtle research and rescue center owned and operated by the late marine biologist Antonio Resendiz and his wife Betty. Antonio and Betty were pillars of the community and well-respected stewards of the sea. The commercial exploitation of the Gulf of California sea turtle began in the 1940s and skyrocketed. By the 70s, the decline of the species began becoming so strong that it was put on the brink of extinction. Through years of hard work and collaboration with scientists and researchers from all over the world, the efforts made by Antonio and Betty were very fruitful and today, the sea turtle is no longer in danger of extinction and the scientific knowledge about this turtle is also extremely extensive. Another of the fronts that Antonio and Betty were faced with was to convince the local inhabitants of Bahia de Los Angeles to modify their aggressive practices and thus join the conversation not only of the sea turtles, but of many other species in the region. Today, Campo Archelón is run by Betty and her son Antonio. Campo Archelón has a few beachfront palapas or thatched roof huts for tent and RV campers. There are also communal restrooms and showers. However, there are no RV dump stations in this area. Rustic casitas are also available for rent if you're not into camping. The camp also has an in-house coffee shop called Siete Filos. They serve breakfast and lunch and also have high-speed internet for those of you who are working remotely while enjoying Baja California. After setting up camp, we settled in and called it an early night after a long drive. We woke up early in the morning, had coffee, and watched the sunrise. We enjoyed the peacefulness of the campground, explored the area, and also had some breakfast at the cafe. Enjoying your coffee? Yep, coffee, meditating, listening to the water. That doesn't look like meditating. It is. It just looks like... Baja meditation. This is our little camp for the next couple days. Today we're just going to relax. Good morning. Well, Erica's is reading her book. I'm gonna go check out the uh, facilities here.
We're here at the beach in Bahia de Los Angeles. Campo Archelon. After breakfast, we loaded the kayak onto the truck and headed for Playa La Gringa. We drove down the road just in front of Campo Archelon until it ended and it became a dirt path. La Gringa is a popular beach for camping and fishing. The sheltered bay makes this area an ideal launch site for boats and anchorage. Whale sharks and fin whales can also often be seen in this beautiful protected bay. The name La Gringa or White Lady is a bit of a mystery and dates back at least 60 years. The story is that a beautiful American widow once lived on the beach, and the local fishermen named the area after her. She was the Gringa of the Bay. Okay, so I just pulled up shore here at La Gringa and I just wanted to check out this little inlet here and I just heard a whale blow out and he came out out of the water. I think it was a whale shark. So I'm gonna go see if I can find said whale shark and hopefully get some footage. So cross your fingers. There's my truck out in the distance. With that big old mountain in the backdrop. Well, I've been paddling for a while and uh, no sign of the whale. I don't think it was a whale shark because this blew out of its blowhole and there was a bunch of water spit up in the air. And I don't think whale sharks do that. Oh crap, I just heard it again somewhere behind me. Um, I don't think it's a whale shark, but it's some type of whale. So maybe I'll just hang out here and listen up. The wind's kind of carrying me towards the uh, south there, but uh, I'm just gonna hang out and see if I can uh, come across this whale. I've been paddling for a while, but I just heard it again right now. We had a great time relaxing, fishing, and kayaking at this beautiful beach. If you're ever in the area, we highly recommend you come visit. Just a reminder, if you enjoy our content, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and give us a big thumbs up below. It helps the YouTube algorithm spread the video out to other outdoor enthusiasts just like you and I. Here in Bahia de Los Angeles, Campo Archelon. Sun's about to come down, dinner time. Yes? Did you say something? It smells good. You want to know when it's almost ready so you can do what? <laughs> Hello. love. We're what? creating content here. <laughs> Early the next morning, we met up with Captain Misael of Fish Arms Sport Fishing. 
We got on the boat, and as soon as we got onto the water, we took out our bait rigs and tried to get some bait. If you're an avid fisherman, you know that getting bait is extremely important because as the saying goes, no bait, no fish. We were fortunate enough to load the bait tank with some really nice sized mackerel. Once we had enough bait, we took off and headed for the fishing grounds. Captain Misael was the first to get a bite and right away, it was a small yellow tail. Yellow tail? Ooh. After that first fish, it was non-stop action. Here, we had a double hookup. Oh, double duty. It's bending and pulling. This is pulling. Give me a color. Yeah, heavy. Do you want to set up? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, man. 
¿qué es esto? ¿Cómo? Sardinera. Sardinera, mi primer sardinera. Oh, ¿sí? uh -huh. Eso es yo Nice. Sardinera. Nice. ¿Y qué tipo de pescado se puede encontrar aquí en Bahía de Los Ángeles? Uh, guachinango, purel, okay. sardinera, uh -huh. dorado, black sibas, grouper, okay. white sibas. Ok, ok, ok. Y para la gente que, que van a mirar este video y si van a visitar aquí a, a Bahía de Los Ángeles, ¿cómo se ponen? en comunicación con usted pues tenemos nuestra página de Fish Arms en, en uh, Facebook uh -huh. en Instagram también Fish Arms Fish Arms y okay. nuestro número de teléfono eh, uh -huh. por Whatsapp también <risa> Well, fishing went pretty well today. We uh, had a total of nine yellowtail fishing deep down on 80 pound tests. So, great day fishing. Caught a sardinetta, a couple of bass. Erica and I are going to take some fresh fish over to the restaurant and uh, have it cooked up with some rice beans and fresh tortillas. Uh, unfortunately, when we were on our way back to the bay, we uh, we, weren't, we didn't see any whale sharks, so we didn't get the chance to swim with the whale sharks. So, uh, Captain says that uh, we just missed the tail end of whale shark season, which is end of October, sometimes into the beginning of November. So, uh, maybe next time on that, hopefully when we come back in April, we, uh, we may get a chance to uh, knock the uh, swimming with the whale sharks off our, off our bucket list. But overall, it was a great day today, beautiful day, less wind. Beautiful weather, sunny, bright, warm, and uh, couldn't ask for a better day of fishing. El sashimi. Fresco. Estaba nadando esta mañana. Aquí hay dos tenedores. ¿Tienes platitos, por favor? Sí, hay dos tenedores. We had a wonderful time in Bahia de Los Angeles. The campground was relaxing, the beaches were beautiful, and we even caught some fish to last us for the next few days for dinner. We could have easily stayed another few days, but we had to move on to our next destination. We'll definitely return soon. So we're getting ready to go have some breakfast and uh, head to Punta Abrejos. Um, <clears throat> last night, we literally we're in a windstorm, so we had to stay inside the trailer starting at 5 o'clock. Winds were super, super hard, super fast. Uh, couldn't be outside, you would get sandblasted. Uh, so we had to stay inside the trailer. Uh, wasn't really anything you can do, I would say, after 5 or 6 p.m. We were going to go use the, uh, the shower facilities, but didn't want to get sandblasted or coated in sand after we, uh, we took a shower. So. Uh, we managed to survive that. We uh, stayed inside the trailer and um, again, we're gonna go get a quick breakfast at the on-site restaurant here in Bahia de Los Angeles at Campo Archelon. And then uh, we're gonna head out. Uh, we're gonna cut across the Pacific, head to Punta Abrejos and uh, we'll see how it is. We sure love visiting Baja, California. And this time was no different. Please join us next time as we visit Gonzaga Bay. If you enjoy our videos, we would truly appreciate if you could give us a big thumbs up below. And while you're down there, you'll see the comment section. If any of you have any questions regarding places to stay, things to do in the area, or even need a recommendation for a good fishing captain, please reach out to me and I'll make sure to get back to you as soon as possible. 
If you're not yet a subscriber, now's the time to do so. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. Also, ring that notification bell to ensure that you don't miss any future episodes of Airstream Expeditions. So, until next time, I remind you all that now's the time to get out and explore.